if you've asked me before why I don't do my own printing, um, one main reason. That is worth, how much? 15 grand. 15 grand, so. And also, uh, every time I get a print printed, I, I send the wrong dimensions. So, if I was doing it myself, um, get expensive. 15 grand! I'm just trying to work out what Emily would do if I, uh, if I got rid of the sofa to make room for that printer and spent 15 grand on it. work out if it's a bit weird having one of my own prints in my own living room. Mm. Also in case you can't tell from the change of clothes and the, the beard, it's about a week after all that b-roll that you just saw. Um, I did try and do this whole video in a day but inevitably... Anyway the builders are still there and it's still quite noisy but I've had enough so I'm just gonna crack on. Uh, you can probably hear the noise in the background. Yeah, today I've lost my patience, so I'm just gonna roll with it. So ever since I started selling prints, I've had a number of people ask me how I came to all the decisions involved in that process. So how I decided on things like paper, sizes, and in particular, how I decided what my prints should be priced at. If you're watching this video in the hope of finding out some sort of correct algorithm for pricing your prints, you're probably gonna be disappointed, because as far as I know, there's nothing like that that exists. Pricing your prints and any art is about personal preference and what you're comfortable selling your stuff for. But, what I can tell you is how I arrived at the decision of what to sell my stuff for. So, long story that I'll try to keep short. When I was living in Australia, that's when I first started getting lots of requests for people who wanted to buy prints. And typically those people themselves weren't in Australia. So it became apparent that if I was gonna find a printers, that had to be either in Europe or in North America. And preferably, the UK, for obvious reasons, that would have meant that once I was back here I could sign stuff and logistically it would have been just much easier. What I managed to do was find a printer that is about 100 yards behind this camera. And that was way before I decided to move to Manchester, so, you know, it's... I mean, in my head, that that's quite a lot of coincidence and it's quite an interesting story. When I say it out loud, it's... It's not as much. Anyway, they're called Klein Imaging. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. They've not paid me to say anything nice about them, but they've been very, very good, particularly at the start of the process when I had absolutely no idea. No clue about paper, no clue about sizing, no clue about logistics. I didn't know anything about certificates of authenticity or shipping, drop shipping, international shipping, none of it. I knew absolutely nothing. And they kind of helped me figure out the whole process and work out what I wanted to sell and who I should be selling to and all that kind of stuff. And that was probably, I reckon, the most important part of the process because all of that stuff helped me determine my costs. And once I had my costs, it became much easier to work out what I was gonna sell prints for. So all my prints are on one kind of paper and on six different sizes. The first two of those sizes are open edition, so I don't even see them. They go straight from the printer to the person that's bought them. And for those, I take the cost and I double it. And that is my price. For the two sizes above, they are limited editions of 100. So they're a bit more exclusive. They come to me, I sign them, and then ship them off myself. For those, because they're a bit more exclusive and because I sign them, I charge two and a half times the cost. And that becomes the price. Uh, for the size above, which is this one behind me, 40 inches wide, they're editions of 10. And because of that, I charge three times the cost. And the final size, which is like, 48 inches wide, huge, that's an edition of five, and because that's the most exclusive one, I charge three and a half times the cost, 
for that one. So uh, yeah, really quite simple to be honest. That's how I do it. There are probably loads of photographers who charge hundreds of times the cost for their photos. This is just what I feel comfortable with. Doesn't mean to say you will, but um, yeah, that's, that's how I do it. I hope that's helpful. One note on shipping. I really wanted to offer free shipping globally because everyone loves free shipping. But what I found was that about 75% of the people who buy prints from me are in the UK. And if I was to offer global shipping, then that cost would have had to be absorbed by all of my customers, most of whom wouldn't even benefit from it. So what I've decided to do is free UK shipping and then basically subsidize shipping for all the other parts of the world. So you do have to pay for shipping if you're not in the UK, but it's not as much as it actually costs me. And that way, I found kind of a, a happy medium. You might find something similar. Anyway, I hope that was useful or interesting if you're planning to sell prints or, or not. Uh, if you're interested in one of my prints, there's a bit of a sale on at the moment. I've put a sale on my website down in the link below. Uh, I don't know how long it's gonna last for. You can get up to 30% off dependent on how big the print you buy is, but last time I did a sale, I did it for like a month and it ended up costing me quite a lot of money. So if you want one, it's probably best to go and get it sooner than later because uh, yeah, I might just have to cull the sale at, at any time. But yeah, whether you do or don't, thank you very much for watching and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.